Well, this is JBigTicket23 from GreenPCGamers.com. Uh, in this video, we're going to show you some upgrades that you can do to your Dell Precision T5810 workstation. Uh, we catered the upgrades towards uh, PC gaming. However, these upgrades will work well for pretty much anything you use this system for. So, if you've never heard of us, uh, visit our website, GreenPCGamers.com. Uh, we have a ton of content as far as upgrade ideas for precision workstations. So this is the configuration. That the only thing that we are changing on this configuration is the hard drive, which is an NVMe solid state drive, and the graphics card. Uh, everything else is basically stock. Um, be, just because everything in, you know, that was stock in there other than those two components will work really well for gaming. Um, so the current config you can see on the screen, um, again, we note that we upgraded the SSD and the graphics card. And, and these are two huge, you know, components as far as boosting performance on the system, especially when the configuration was, you know, the way it's set. So here's the NVMe drive on the bottom and the graphics card. Obviously, the T5810 does not have an NVMe slot on the system board, so we do need to use an adapter card. And if you're wondering, yes, you can boot to the NVMe drive. Um, so you can load Windows right to that drive. Um, and then there's the GTX 1080, uh, a pretty great streamlined graphics card, you know, that'll get you typically right around 100 FPS for pretty much any game you play. Now... The MVS, or the, not the MVS, but the GTX card does require auxiliary power. And as you can see here, this system has a 685 watt power supply. So we're just over the minimum requirement of what they recommend for that graphics card. So we've got three USB 3.0 slots, two USB 2.0 slots, PS2 ports, serial port, network cable, or network port, and audio. So it's very easy to pull the side panel off on this system. So that's what it looks like inside. This is a single socket based uh, Xeon based PC. This is where the hard drives would go if you're going to do three and a half inch drives. Uh, these are the I.O. slots. It does have quite a few PCI Express 16 slots or actually only I think only two. But because of the power supply wattage, you would not want to SLI or cross fire in the system. Here's our adapter that we're going to use for the graphics card. It's two six pin, uh, two eight pin, and that's what the GTX 1080 requires. Um, we're gonna go ahead and install this graphics card, but you might th be thinking, well, why not do a 1080, uh, or sorry, a 1080 Ti? Well, that's technically would work in this system, but we're kind of pushing it when we only have a 685 watt power supply. So I would recommend a 1080 is the highest you know graphics card that you can put in the system. Again, go to greenpcgamers.com and check out our blog on the T5810 workstation because um, it'll tell you recommended cards for the system. So you don't have to do a 1080. If you don't have the budget for that, you could go with the 1050, a 1060, or a 1070. Um, you know, your performance will depend on the GPU. It's very heavy on the GPU for most games. So we got the card installed. Make sure you plug in your auxiliary power. If you forget to plug this in or you don't have the right adapter and you try to you know, power the unit on, it's going to halt you in post telling you to plug it in. So bam, we got our GTX 1080 installed. All right, now here's the NVMe. This is what it looks like when you get the NVMe drive. You just get the drive. You have to buy the adapter separately. And you have to install it. So we're going to show you how to install it. Here's the card bunch of different uh, sizes available there's the model if you want to buy this card it is PCI Express and again you can boot to this drive so in our case we're not even going to use a conventional SATA drive or even a two and a half inch SSD with an adapter we are just going to use an NVMe drive for performance in this case we're using Western Digital this is the first time I've used Western Digital because the price was so low, but typically we use uh, Samsung Evo drives. But we've been testing this system for a few months now, and it, it runs fairly well with the Western Digital drive. All right, so we're going to go ahead and install this NVMe drive. A few different slots we could choose. So we're going to choose the top slot, 
And we're going to choose that just because there's a fan below. There are two fans on that GTX 1080 card. So we are going to leave the bottom slots open. I mean, and really you could install cards down there, but since we don't need to, we're going to put it around the top. And the NVMe card really doesn't produce much for heat. So we're not worried too much about that. It's kind of a tough angle, but all you do is line that up, push it in. Blue retention clip locks it in. So those are the two basic upgrades. Now the system's ready to, you know, ready to play games. Obviously, you have to install your operating system. In this case, we have Windows 10 Pro installed. We're going to show you the device manager, the, the drive, the graphics card, and this is the processor. It's really a quad-core proc, but it shows up as eight cores because of the hyperthread. 3.5 gigahertz, high clock speed. It's what we're looking for for gaming. So we're also going to show you this benchmark. Now, this is the end of the benchmark test. We don't want to make you sit and wait through the whole thing. This is a game called Tom Clancy's The Division. That has a nice little benchmark test built into it. This is the end of it. As you can see in the top left, it might be a little bit blurry, but it'll show you what we're getting right now for FPS. So this basically goes around, tests it on, on this big map, and it's going to give us some results here shortly. Now, typically, like for gaming, minimum you want to have 60 FPS when, when you're playing. Otherwise, it's kind of unplayable. Uh, it also depends on what kind of monitor you have. In our case, we're running a 144 hertz monitor, so I mean, we'll, we'll go as, with as many frames as we can get. But And the, the system performs really well. Um, 102 frames. Um, average CPU is only 72%, which is pretty good for this game. Um, average GPU, 93%. This game typically uses a lot of GPU. So our configuration is doing really, really, really well. So I'm going to take you to greenpcgamers.com right now to give you a little peek at it. So this is the site. Um, you can go to the blog and you can look at systems that we've converted to gaming PCs or done upgrades on. Uh, for example, well, if you're looking at the uh, T5810, you can just search it. We go through, uh, based off of your budget, um, you know what upgrades you could do. So if you really only need a processor upgrade, you, know, you can look right here. We tell you the step codes, speeds, amount of cores, um, memory options, drive options, graphics card options, uh, sample configurations. Um, so it's really cool. Um, you can also uh, you know, review the page, uh, suggest a topic. If there's something that we haven't covered that you want to see, absolutely hit us up on here. Uh, and if you like free merch, we do giveaways on occasion. So go ahead and click the subscribe today page and we will hit you up uh, when we are doing giveaways and, and let you know if you win. So that's all I've got for you. Um, thanks a lot for watching this video. If you like what you saw, please hit that subscribe uh, on the YouTube. Um, comment below if you have any questions. Um, if you have, if you want to ask questions live, I do stream on Twitch. Uh, my Twitch handle is right uh, right on the screen. Thanks again for watching.